I'll try my best to make it sound interesting. <laughs> okay, I started already. Yeah, my I can do some editing if I need later. So, um, I will probably record the whole sessions like, instead of uh, breaking into two. Just leave it there. Let you run. Um, we will have a bit of lecture, uh, then we will do a bit of exercises. You know, it will probably like groups as well as a uh, bit like. There will be only one individual. Then, once we complete the whole sets of the theory, then we're going to taste it. Okay. Now, I've given you a uh, handouts. Um, your handouts will be slightly different from mine because my one got answers as well as some uh, reminder for my uh, activity. Then, I've also given you a handout uh, which we will play it later. All right. Uh, first of all, my name is Clemens. Clemens Fu. I've been studying wine since 2015. And um, like some of you might know that um, I'm supposed to graduate last week, this week, last week. <laughs> but because of the MCO, I eventually postponed my study for three years. Hopefully this year I will be able to complete my diploma. Then I will be able to attend the graduation next year. So the diploma in wine. So I'm going to start with, uh, because the topic is about wine. Therefore, it's very important for us to know our sensory level. So in front of you, I have actually uh, given you four sets of gems. Um, you try not to mix up the number. So you could try it. I just prepared it this morning, so it's totally fresh and hygienic to consume already. So you can try any sequence you like, but just to make sure that uh, you actually put back at the right position. Then I will ask you later um, which one is which. These are all gems. Um, it's a French gem. So anyone's allergy to gem? No. It's fine. Right. Fine. Keep it to yourself. If you want, you can take notes. You can write on that piece of paper, no problem. I'll give you a new one later uh, when we actually place the glasses on the table. Alright, so have you tasted it all? Yeah. 
So I think it's very important at this stage just to uh, let everyone aware of it. Um, when we truly enjoy wine, we need to actually enhance as well as to um, understand you know, the sensory, especially coming from different aroma as well as flavors. So um, let's start with Dinesh. Dinesh, could you tell me, number one, what, what sort of gem is that? I've heard this gem before, but I'm not familiar. <laughs> I can't remember the from the the raspberry. Uh, the first one. Raspberry. Yeah. Raspberry. How about you, Richard? Raspberry. Grapes. 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 Okay. What do you think, Martin? I think it's either blackberry or the one that you mentioned. Yeah, blackberry. I think it's blackberry. Blackberry. Close. The first one is actually a black currant. Black so that's always the challenge, you know, <laughs> when we try to taste wine. So it's like jogging oh, which one is which. <laughs> but the first one is in fact is a black currant. So later we will taste the wine that has a black currant. Number second, uh, Richard, what do you think? The second one? Obviously it's a red, right? It's a red in color instead of black. This one. So yeah. I can't remember what's the name of it. Jelly or jelly? Yeah. Or oh, one thing, you want to try the second one? Raspberry or passion fruit? Raspberry. The second one is actually a raspberry. But if it's going to be passion fruit, you will see the seeds inside the jam. Because it's a bit sourish. Sourish, I think, yes. So let's look at the third one. The third one is, uh, I believe, is a black, black fruit side. Blueberry. Dinesh, what do you think? It's a blackberry or grape. It's a blueberry. <laughs> it's a blueberry. Very so complicated. So complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Even the jam it already started to confuse you, isn't it? Uh, Richard, why don't you try the last one? Last one, uh, mm. uh, this, this, uh, you can get it somewhere in Era, Pahang, up in the hill, mountain. Uh, very famous. <laughs> 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 Straightforward, is it? Same like the one number two. One. No, it's <laughs> different. Yeah. Both are red, but are different berry. Different berry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Strawberry. Strawberry, yes. Ah. So the fourth one is a strawberry. So at this stage, I think more or less. Uh, you should be able to know uh, how far you can actually recognize those uh, what we call the flavors of a jam. And it's very close to wine, in fact, because wine is actually based on uh, fruits. Most of the flavors, the aromas are based on fruits. And this is where we're going to start off today. So, um, before I move on to the next one, let us try to understand our today's key learning outcome. Um, I'm trying to Make it really short um, instead of trying to break it down. So basically, I only have two learning outcomes for the next four hours. The first one is actually to identify the key stages in grapes growing and also wine making. <coughs> now, why do we need to know the grapes growing so that we can better understand you know, the products, which is wine, how does it actually make, where does it come from? And the second learning outcome is to identify the types characteristic and styles of wine. Now, these are the three key words for the second learning outcome. The types, we have three types of uh, wine. We have a lot of different you know, ways to actually address the characteristics of a wine, and also the styles of wine. And then the principles, great variety, and also other examples of wine. So today we'll be looking at seven. Right, today we'll be looking at seven principal grapes varieties. So those are, will be our learning outcomes for today. Now, what you have in front of you is, uh, is a, um, it's a bingo sheet. So what I need you to do is to probably, I believe uh, you may have know each other, but perhaps what we can do is we can try to know each other a bit more through today's sessions. Now, what you're going to do is uh, this bingo sheet You will get each other to put up a signature on the box, box that actually best describe you. So 
you will sign three boxes from here. Overlap is okay, but two is true and one is lie. So that for example, uh, I like green apples. I put a signature on green apples on your sheets. I, I worked at Inti and likes tropical fruits. Among these three, two is true and one is false. So I need you to do that for me. Right? Then we will move on later from here. Okay. Can we just take five minutes right, to get everyone to sign up the sheets for each other? Sign three, yeah. yeah. You can get Dinesh to sign three for you. You can get one thing to sign three for you. Not yourself, no? You don't sign. Or don't talk to You can sign for me. Sign for you. Two, two, and two must be true, and one is false. Or lies. Okay, all right. Dinesh, why not we start from you? All right, um, I think I believe one thing I've already put down her signature. So, what are those three? Uh, she watches Korean drama, she likes video girl, she teaches mathematics. Alright, so which two you think is true about her? Watch Korean drama, I'm sure it's true. Uh, likes video girl, it's true. So, one thing, is that true? Yes. Alright, bingo! So you obviously know one thing very well. <laughs> because she doesn't teach math. Okay. She doesn't teach right. Alright. So how about um let's try Richard. So Richard, what do you think of Dinesh? Dinesh actually. What are those three uh, boxes that Dinesh have signed on? Uh like shopping, shopping colour boots, love cooking, love cooking. and love DIY. Love DIY. Mm. Alright. Which two you think is true about? Uh, love DIY and life of the So what do you think Dinesh is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I love cooking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you just love cooking. So, so one thing, why not? Um, you look at Dinesh. What are those three boxes? Dinesh. Play tennis. Uh, true. <coughs> Play tennis. Like party. Like party. Maybe. <laughs> I don't think he likes to read fiction. Doesn't like to read fiction? Actually, I like to read fiction. Alright. I don't party. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> now we know Dinesh a bit more. Like <laughs> today, that's good. That's good. No, really, really. I learned a lot of fiction. So, I think we, we, we I, I'm not sure whether we are actually a good guesser to show you all, but I believe that we know a bit from each other lah, from here. At least that, you know, we know Dinesh doesn't like cooking, and uh, he doesn't like partying, right? And he's such a noble person, he only reads fiction <laughs> and plays tennis. These are the royal family, English royal family. 
So this will be our today's agenda. Uh, it might be, it looks a long list here, but in fact, um, you could actually just go through it quickly. And because this is just an introduction, so we should be able to cover the most basic uh, components or information about wine. So it's nothing to be stressful, so don't worry. First, we try to figure out what is wine. Right? Just basically try to define what is wine. And then we try to understand how we actually grow the grapes to produce wine. And then I think this is one of the very uh, important parts where we are trying to understand wine is to know the types and also the style of wine as well as the characteristics of each of those different types of wine. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we will be looking at seven different types of principal grape variety. And we will do a bit of exercise on the uh, what we call example of wine. And um, we will take a break. When we come in from a break, then we will start tasting. I think that will be the highlights of today's session. So why is wine? Of course, wine is an alcoholic beverage. Right? But it's actually made from a grapes. Right? And the grape must be crushed in order to release the juices. Because it's an alcoholic beverage, so we need to actually produce alcohol from the juice. So first, we take the grapes, we crush it, right? we release the juice, then we'll start the alcoholic fermentation process. From there, it will allow us to actually produce a wine, of course, and the alcohol. So let's try to understand a little bit on the grapes. This is the raw product. Without the grapes, there won't be an alcohol uh, or wine. So here, examples given is a black grapes. Look at the, the skin. Uh, it's definitely not a white grapes. It's a black grapes. And if we look at the skin, it consists of tanning, color, as well as the flavor. So if I'm going to produce a red wine using a black grapes, the skin is very important to me. Why? Any idea? Finish? You want to try? The flavor of tanning, I think, because mm -hmm. more grapes makes it more, more sweeter or bitter, not bitter. Astringent. That's the word. Apart from that? The color. The color. I believe the color is very important. Why? Because it's a red wine, I mean the red color. So the colors definitely come from the skin. And we have the pulp. This is where you get the sugar, the acid, the water. The waters may actually carry about 89%. Then you have subsequent sugars and acids. But again, it really depends on what types of the variety, right? the grapes variety. <coughs> and this is the, uh, the challenge. Uh, when we try to make crush the grapes, it's very important not to crush the pips. Because once you crush the pips, the bitter oil release. And then the whole batch, uh, a whole batch of, uh, of uh, the juices will have to be discarded, or probably we have to turn it into a vinegar. Right. So this is alcoholic fermentation. So we are believe we have learned this uh, in those days, right? In form four, probably in form three as well, right? Uh, like we have just covered earlier, um, the previous slides, we crush the grapes, we release the juice. And the juice consists of high contents of sugar, of course, apart from water. That sugar is in the grape juice, will mix with the yeast. And this is the yeast that is controlled yeast. Uh, it's not a wild yeast, so it's cultured yeast. In other words, it means the yeast is added by the winemaker, not allowing, but happens by itself. So once the yeast starts to consume the sugar, all right, until the very last moment, it will help to produce an alcohol. That is exactly what we are looking for. And also carbon dioxide. This is the, what we call a side product. You can consider this as a side product. But it's also the only product that we are actually looking for when it comes to alcoholic fermentations. The heat will also release uh, because the yeast is an organism. Therefore, when it consumes, it releases heat just like us. So I admit, at, at this particular size, it's important, important in the sense that you know, without the alcoholic fermentations, there won't be a wine. Okay? So this is the first stage 
to actually turn the grape juice into wine. Let's look at the map over here. Now, it's not everywhere, right? Definitely not in Malaysia, right? Uh, Malaysia is at the equator. This is zero degrees. So this is Malaysia. So there is only certain parts in the world that wine or perhaps the wine grapes can be grown. So we look at the north and also the south. So the north is 30 degrees to 50 degrees. The south is 30 degrees to 50 degrees. So only those countries, those two regions that fall under within that north and south, 30 to 50 degrees, where the wine can be successfully grown, that particular grapes. So obviously the Europe is here, right? And China, Japan, okay? We have the California over here, and also the East Coast. On the south, we have any idea? Chile. Chile. Next to Chile is Argentina. Argentina. Excellent. Excellent. Right. So these are the two countries in the Latin America, and here, this is the Africa continent, the South Africa, and of course the Australia as well as the New Zealand. So these are the major countries that produce uh, what about the, the primary uh, of the wine that are available in the market. Okay. Now you also look at the uh, the arrow. We have this uh, purple arrow, uh, probably a blue arrow, and also the red one. It actually shows the current. Now if you look at the north 30 to 50 degrees, uh, these are the areas, especially this part, closer to the north. Uh, generally speaking, the climate is very cold. Okay? And then if you look at the south 30 to 50 degrees, those places is actually lower to the uh, what's called closer to the south. It's also kind of very cold, but not as cold as the north. Why? Because the current. You have this what we call a uh, warm current. Uh, the arrows is showing the warm current. They're coming from the uh, what's called, uh, no sorry the cold current. Uh, my mistake. These are the cold current. They're coming from the south. Uh, as we know that the temperatures at from these places are uh, definitely slightly higher compared to the Europe. So in order to actually bring down the temperature. So that to actually strike a balance, we don't want to have too cold or too hot. Uh, the grapes is like human beings, we prefer something in between, a balance, not too cold, not too hot. But because of the, uh, the south, 30 to 50 degrees, in those places, the temperature will be slightly hotter, warmer, I should not use the word hotter, it should be warmer. So in order to bring down the temperatures, um, it's the act of God. Right? Uh, not too much of science, I believe so. It's because of the nature will actually bring a cold current from the oceans to actually into the mainland in order to reduce the temperature. However, in the Europe, generally speaking, the climate is cool, it's cold. The temperatures tend to be very low. So if you look at the arrow, uh, which is the red arrow, uh, this is the Atlantic Oceans. The Atlantic Oceans bring warm current into the mainland in order to actually bring up the temperatures. So that is where those places actually enjoy uh, the privilege to grow grapes for making wine. Okay. So let's look at how grapes are grown. Three stages, right, uh, for basic level. First, flowering. After flowering, each of those flowers will become grapes. That's called fruit sacs. And then eventually ripen. So you can see the color change. That is a process called Verison. V E R A I S O N. Verison process. Where it changed the colors from this raw green color into translucent, um, probably yellow, yellowish, greenish, or ruby or purple. So the flowering is important. If it start rain during the flowering stage, then it will affect the quantity, which is, in other words, we call the yield. Okay? As well as if there is a rain during the fruit sets, this is the stage called we call the fruit sets. If it's a rain, again, it will affect the quantity. 
And if it's going to rain during the harvest at this stage, then your grape will swallow the water. Then you will actually reduce the quantity of sugar inside the grape. And therefore, you will end up having a very low alcohol. So this is basically how the grapes grow. Now I'm going to show you a little bit more. In order to ripen a grape, that's the word, to ripe. <coughs> we need sunlight, we need heat. I want the process that actually produce sugar. Can anyone recall? Uh, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, yes, correct. So the sunlight and so the heat hits at the environment, at the vineyards. The sunlight is coming from the sky. That will help us to actually start the photosynthesis. And the photosynthesis allows us to produce sugar. And when sugar level increase, what happens? The acids will reduce. And then the flavors will become riper uh, if it's in the very warm climate regions. If in the cold climate region, what would you think? A places which is very cold like Germany. So it's not easy to actually ripe uh, the grapes, to ripen the grapes. So the acid level will tend to be higher. The sugar level will tend to be lower. And what do you think of the flavor? Not the... The sugar level, acid, yeah, that, that part we are done. But the flavor, the aroma, tends to be more jammy, or it tends to be more glassy, herbaceous. Germany. What do you think? Sugar level is lower, acid is high, all right, because it's too cold in the environment, and then by the time the grapes, just about right. You harvest it. You put it inside your mouth. <coughs> How would be the tra the aroma taste like? Is it jammy, jammy like the one that you tasted, or it tends to be more what we call herbaceous? herbaceous. I think it should be more herbaceous, more glassy, right? So you will end up having totally two different types of uh, what we call wine. Right. If you actually grow the same grapes in the hotter, warmer climates, it tends to be more jammy. For example, in Spain or in Portugal. Okay. Of course, the grape skin will change along the way when the grapes ripen. You can see the graph over here that the acid level will start to reduce along the time, and then the sugar level will start to increase, provided there is sufficient sunlight and also heat in the surrounding. I think this slide will speak a lot about the effect on climates on the grapes, uh, effect of climates on the grapes. Now, in the warm, warmer climates, um, you tend to have more alcohol. The wine that you produce, right? The body, body means that how you feel inside your palate tends to be fuller. Um, one thing, do you like to try? Why you tend to have more alcohol? Uh, in the wine that you produce in the warmer climate? The answer can be found there. What is your question again? Oh, my question is, uh, the wine that you produce in the warmer climate regions, right, like places like uh, California, right, and Australia, mm -hmm. right, where your alcohol tends to have more alcohol, uh, more, what we call, more mm -hmm. alcohol, sorry. The, the, the wine tends to have more alcohol. The reason is, more acid, more sugar. less acid, more sugar. <coughs> less acid, more sugar. So because the sugar will be converted into alcohol, like what we have just gone through earlier in the alcoholic fermentations. All right, and more tanning. Why more tanning? You still remember tanning? Where does it come from? Mainly skin. from the skin. So when the grapes uh, achieve full ripeness, means it has a full physical, I would call, um, right on the skin. And therefore, you tend to get more tanning right, from the grapes. On the opposite, in the cool climates regions, you tend to have less alcohol. One thing, what do you think? Why those wine that produce in the cool climates tend to have less alcohol? Um, lower sugar level and higher acid. It's more acidic. Excellent. Yeah, definitely. And then the body tends to be lighter. So if you notice from these slides, the body and the alcohol are closely related. 
When the alcohol level increase, the body increase. When the alcohol level reduce, the body reduce. So how do you know that whether the body is fuller or it's actually low? It's how you feel inside your palate. So it's like drinking a full cream milk and drinking a skim milk. That, that's the difference. But alcohol play a very important role. So when you look at a bottle of a wine, you look at the bottle, the bottle shows that it's a 15% Lima Blas Bratos compared to another bottle only showing 9%. Which one? Because 9% of alcohol, 15% of alcohol. You more or less can tell which one is fuller body, which one is lesser body. Okay. Right. Let's look at this. We have activity over here. The bodies from a convenience store upstairs at the uncle. What you need to do is uh, you have a piece of uh, A4 paper and you also have a lot of this cutting. Um, I need you to actually arrange it for me from one to six. They are all together six if I'm not wrong. Some you may have come across the stages of grape growing. I give you a clue. I give you a clue. The last stage has to be harvest. The last stage must be harvest. So what will be the first stage? Second, third, fourth, fifth. The last will be harvest. The tips is in the, in the no, it's not in the note. The tips is in the cutting. It's here. Oh. You can look for the tips here. Okay. The month of the year. <laughs> I think I made a mistake. The last stage is not the harvest. So by looking at finish uh, answers over there, it's like hmm. do it the other way around. Yeah. You do it the other way around. <laughs> 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 
So you reminded me, oh, no, no, that's not. <laughs> I watched a documentary talk about one, uh, water, bottled water. Um, terrible in terrible industry. <laughs> Especially in the US. You see, they only pay about $200 US dollar a year for the licensing. But they are generating billions, billions from water the water that they pump from the stream. Oh my goodness. Yeah, salt, salt slipping in and all that. Uh, imagine that you keep pumping uh, the other side. Of the well, yeah. the reducing. What the, what kind of the uh, so you run The wine is also the same thing. Yesterday I was watching the documentary also. It's about wine. China is the is the rising star. It's too aggressive. But, but uh, again. It is the image problem. Um, people don't, even the locals don't drink Chinese wine yeah. because of the, the image. The they always have their fake wine. So many fake wine around the area, like in the country, sorry. So it's not easy to recognize whether the fish is gathering, which is the fake. So, are we done? So, Jay, you want to tell us your. Okay, so I will start off with uh, after winter, reduce winter, <coughs> wine, uh, we call it wine, uh, not plant, not tree, right? Wine, plant. Vine. Wine. Vine. 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 And then bud will become flower and fruit saps mm -hmm. later on. And then we have uh, Verizon, Verizon, is it? Verizon. Verizon, French word. And change in color, right? Yeah, change in color. color. And, uh, berry ripening. Mm -hmm. And once it's ripened enough for the choice of wine, we can harvest this. Yeah. Okay. How about you, one thing? Alicia, leaf grow, bud first, flower, fruit saps, Verizon. Harvest hmm. almost almost that's a bit Richard. Richard, how do you decide eh? which is which? Look look, look at the the planet? Uh, you look at the calendar. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> that's the calendar there, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Let's look at the answer. So it all started with a bud burst. Of course, you can actually start with the winter dormancy because it's a cycle. It's always a cycle. But just make sure that the winter dormancy as well as the bud burst is actually next to each other. So the bud burst is somewhere in um, what we call um, March to April. Uh, this is a critical part. Why? March, April? Spring. spring. That's just exactly the end of a winter and just started the spring. One of the risks uh, in the vineyard is the spring frost. So the spring frost obviously is it will come to at night the temperatures can reduce to negative, zero to negative. So that's going to freeze the whole thing and the buds will be damaged or destroyed because of the spring frost. So we start with the bud burst and then move on to the early shoots and leaf grow, and then the next one will be the flowering and the fruit sets. The challenge here is um, keep the finger crossed, don't rain. If it's a rain, then it's going to affect the yield, or in other words, the quantity that you will get uh, by the end of the year. So, after the fruit sets, so you can see that this will turn into uh, our colorful uh, what we call grapes. 
and that is the stage called the berry forms. It's a change of color, and then the berry will start ripening until a stage where it really depends on what kind of wine they're going to produce. So uh, at this stage, just to give you a bit of idea, if I'm going to produce a sparkling wine, I would not expect my grapes to be fully ripe because I want to retain high acidity level inside the grapes. Because uh, the quality of a good sparkling wine is to have high, quality, uh, high quantity or high level of acidity. So then after the harvesting, the vine will actually go into the dormancy during the winter season. So the winter will start somewhere around, um, we're looking at late November, beginning of December, all the way until the beginning of March. Okay. So harvest will probably taking place in late September, or again, depending on the types of wine. If I'm going to produce a sparkling wine, it will be the beginning of September or even much earlier at the late August. But if you're going to produce wine, a steel wine or light wine which has no bubble inside, um, it might actually keep it aged for many, many years to come. I'll probably harvest it somewhere in the late September or early October. But again, you know, you look at the climate change because of the temperatures, the climate change is higher, the temperatures now is higher. So a lot of this uh, harvest has been earlier rather than later. Okay. So this will be our answer. You can have it. You can um, just you know uh, make your corrections on that piece of paper, and you can have it. All right. Let's move on to uh, wine making. Let's look at wine making. So there are two processes when it comes to wine making. Uh, white wine as well as red wine. So let's look at the white wine. Uh, wine is because the process is much simpler compared to red wine. So if you're going to make a white wine, first, like what we have uh, covered earlier, you need to crush the grapes because you need to release the juice. Because the juice has all the sugars where we're going to put the yeast in order to consume all the sugars in order to produce the alcohol. But before the fermentation, and this fermentation is alcoholic fermentation, just before the fermentation, there is a stage that we need to carry out, we call pressing. Now this pressing is basically to press out the juice. You crush, you release the juice, but you need to make sure you benefit until the very last drop of juices that come out from the grapes. So you have to press it. So by pressing, at the same time, you also separate the juice from the skin. So in order to make a white wine, we don't need the skin because we do not need the color. So if you put the skin inside, it's no longer a white wine. It becomes a green wine because it's going to look very greenish or possibly yellowish. So in order to avoid the color from the skin, during the pressing, we separate the juice and the skin. Okay? And then we move on into the fermentations. And then after the fermentation, now this is the stage called maturations. Now, like uh, I mentioned earlier, the grapes is actually a, a living cell. So it's like you jogging the whole day, working hard the whole day. At night, you want to rest. Right? So then you can start fresh the next day. Same for the wine. After a long process from the vineyard, harvest, crushing, Pressing, fermentation, your wine need to rest down in order to refresh themselves. So maturation is actually a stage to actually rest the wine. So how long does it take? Nine months to a year. Some may be two years, some may go up to 36 months. But it really depends on what type of wine you're trying to produce. And then the last stage is bottling. However, if you look at the red wine making process, crushing, similar to white wine, Fermentation before the pressing. One thing, any idea why? The fermentation has taken place before the pressing in the red wine making process. Because we need the color. Yes, we need the color from the skin. So during the fermentations, the temperature increases. So it's easier to abstract the color from the skin that is during the fermentations. After fermentation, we drain them. Okay, drain, 
then we press to the very last drop of uh, juices. But in this case, no longer juices, it's wine already, because it's alcohol. Right? Then we move on to maturation step bottling. Now, what makes the rosé wine? The rosé wine is what we call pink wine. It's a celebration. Uh, the wine that we use a lot in celebration, as well as during summer. Ladies like it very much. And what makes it different from red wine is the fermentation will only take place a few hours, four, six hours, just to enough to extract the color, pink color. That's why the color is not red. That's why we call rosé wine, because it's a pink wine. So it should only be pink color. So after fermentation, how long? A few hours, not days, just a few hours. Probably six hours, then drain and go straight into maturation and then bottling. Okay. Let's do a group exercise. Just a quick one, right? Here, I got all the pictures over here that illustrate the different stages of our wine making. You may have to use a bit of your intelligence on it. A bit too obvious, right? So this will be the last one. Okay. Then the rest will be good. So what I need you to do is to take and a paper, all right? And I need you to just, someone write down what is the stage for each of them. And I just need you to paste it over there, starting from the left, my left hand side, near the door, all the way to the right. So this will be the last. And this will be bottling. So what you need to do is just bottling. i just leave it to you. This is the situation from the moment. This is a question. <laughs> 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 Training or the picture just shows it coming out. Only focus on that, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, we need a machine to press.
Generally speaking, there are only three types of wine. So the first one, we call it the steel wine. It's also known as the light wine. So it's steel, it's a light. So in other words, there is no bubbles. Okay. They might have a little bit of a carbon dioxide, but a little bit, but it's not significant. So generally speaking, a steel wine consists of 8 to 15% of alcohol. The ABV stands for alcohol by volume. So it's a basically the general uh, expressions of alcohol in a bottle of wine. So if I, if you come across a bottle of, of what do you call, uh, wine, a red wine, that has 15% of alcohol, ABV, so the rest will be water. That's it, very simple, straightforward. So, still wine, you can either name after the grape variety, in this case, we will go into the grape variety later, but just to give you an example, Grapes variety. What's, what types of grapes right, they actually use to make this particular red wine? Right? But in this case, it's not a red wine. Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio is a white grape from Italy. Or you can actually name after the region. Where does it come from? Right? Like Sunset in France, Burgundy, also from France, Rioja from Spain, and Chianti from Italy. So there's a region, a wine region named Chianti. Right? So then people know of oh, Chianti. Then you can tell immediately what type of grape they use. Then there's also a place called Rioja. It's actually from Spain. And then Burgundy and Sonse, both are from France. So you can actually name, I can actually name a wine from Penang. If I make it more specific, I'll tell you it's from Bukit Jambu. Let's imagine you have two bottles of wine in front of you. Two bottles. One bottle put down Pinay, and another bottle put down Bukit Jambu. Which one do you think the price will be higher? Any reason? Because it's more specific. I think the, they are pointing out the specificity or the speciality of the region. Yes. The yeah. Absolutely. That's correct. If you actually look at Pinay, it means that the grapes could come from anywhere. It's not specific enough. If it's from Bukit Jambu, this particular vineyard, then the wine tends to be more expensive. But of course, the vineyard, the Bukit Jambu must be famous. So if it's not famous, I would rather use the name Penang rather than Bukit Jambu. Okay, excellent. Okay. Then the second type of wine, uh, that is where the sparkling comes into pictures. So you have the bubbles. So the sparkling wine is where you manage to dissolve the carbon dioxide inside the bottle. Okay. Uh, Champagne from the regions of Champagne in France, Cava from Spain, Prosecco from Italy. So I think some of you may have come across the, the name Prosecco. It's quite popular in the last five years. Uh, the price is affordable. And then it's um, very fresh, very refreshing. A lot of young people love it very much. Cava and Champagne is always like, I don't know, Competing with each other because they're using the similar wine making technique. There will be a slightly different way of making a sparkling wine, which we will not cover in these lessons. Any idea? Um, can I call champagne if I produce it in Penang? Any reason why? I think it's regulation, right? Mm -hmm. The country has regulation saying that you must use that specific wine, must be produced in a specific region. Correct. So if I actually produce a sparkling wine in Penang, I can only call it sparkling wine. I can't call it champagne. Only those sparkling wine they produce in the regions of Champagne in France, in the north of France, that can only be known as champagne. Okay, fortified wine. This is the third type of wine. There are three. 
steel, sparkling, and the last one is 45. Additional alcohol is added, right, into the steel wine. So when you actually produce a steel wine, what you do is you add on additional alcohol, plus a few more steps of a wine making process. So therefore, what happens is you tend to have a slightly higher, it's not slightly, in fact, it's quite high compared to the steel wine. It's 15 to 22 percent of alcohol by volume. Uh, generally speaking, the markets, these are the two fortified wine. One is sherry, the other one is port. Sherry is actually made from white wine, so the base wine is from white. Port, the base wine is red. Port is actually a red fortified wine. Sherry is actually a white fortified wine. So what happened here is, there's a slight difference. Drinking port is a slightly different, not, not much of difference, sorry. It's quite similar to drinking a red wine with a very high alcohol, somewhere around 14 to 15%. But sherry is totally different from white wine. Uh, my first impressions of a sherry, this is my first impression. I always told this to, to, to everyone in the past. Uh, it's like Danish, wake up very early in the morning, you start jogging, you wear your jogging shoes, pull out your socks, your sneakers, then you start to jog the next four hours. On your way back, the last half an hour, heavy rain. You don't care, you sleep, continue to jog until you reach home. Once you reach home, your dog step, you take off your socks, you squeeze out the water from your socks and you start to smell it. That is how a sherry smells like. That's the impression, it's not really how it smells like. But that is the impression I got about sherry. So, um, those days, who will drink sherry? Grandpa. Only grandma. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Grandpa is more to the pot, but grandma loves sherry very much. So today, I think, uh, in order to capture the youngster markets, the sherry have actually made a lot of changes in terms of packaging, in terms of the way how they make it, in order to attract uh, young people's interest. So that is 45 points. Let's look at the styles of wine. Now in this part, for the next probably uh, 10 to 12 slides, we're looking at the structural characteristics of a wine, the structures of a wine. Right? We'll be looking at the colors, we'll be looking at the acid levels, uh, tannins, uh, what we call the body. All right? So let's look at the color. So of course, we can differentiate the wine based on the color. Red wine, obviously, it has to be made from using a black grapes. So the colors from, come from the skin, and also the tanning comes from the skin. Tanning is a very important component in the red wine. Three reasons. Antiseptic. So it actually helps to kill the bacteria. It also helps to age better into the future. So in order to age longer, so like 100 years, 50 years, you need tanning. So it also helps to actually preserve the wine. So it actually has a function of preservation. So tanning play a very important part in the red wine, but not too much on the, what about the white wine. So the juice is fermented with the skin in order to abstract the color. Uh, we come across this place called Rioja. Any idea? Do you remember where does it come from? It come from Spain. Then this is the name of a grape that actually produce excellent red wine. It's actually called or known as the Cabernet Sauvignon. Move on. We have a white wine. It's made from white grapes. Can can I also here already uh, say put out occasionally make using black grapes? <coughs> Is that possible? Go to the skin and then you say yes, because we already separated the skin before the fermentation. But can we use white grapes in making red wine? And color kind of <laughs> color <laughs> so Let's say it's purpleless, uh, purpose uh, not. It doesn't make sense. Right? It, does, it really doesn't make sense. Two reasons. Right? Because it doesn't contribute in terms of color. And what happens is the black grapes, the flavor, the aroma, will overpower the uh, white grapes. So it doesn't contribute much at all. So if you have a bottle, or well, not bottle, I think if you have a glass of red wine in front of you and a glass of white wine in front of you, which one would you drink first? The white. The reason? The strong flavor of the uh, yes. red wine will overpower. It will overpower the white wine. That's the same idea so over here. The reason why we don't use the white grapes for black uh, red wine. 
So juice is fermented without the skin and faces from Chablis. So it's a French uh, town called Chablis and the wine they produce Chablis. So um, I used to have students student ask me, sir, um, how do you know what grapes they use in Chablis? Because they never put, not at the front level, not at the back level, it's just Chablis. So how do you know what grapes do they use? Because they only use one grape. So when you read this, you go through the theory, you study, and you know that they only use one type of grape. The grape is called Chardonnay, which will come across that later. So Chablis, immediately, what you should think of, the grape is Chardonnay. Uh, Riesling, right? Riesling is a very versatile grape variety, very versatile. Why? Because it can be dry, means there's totally no sweets at all in the bottle. Right? Or it can become very sweet. So that's what we call the grapes very versatile. Okay? That's a bottle of Chablis. So that is just by looking at the label, you know, okay, Chablis, Chardonnay. That is the impression you get. Then we have rosé wine. So any ideas where the colors come from? One thing? The skin, yes. And it's much lighter than uh, red wine. Why? You don't go through the pressing and also a few hours. Only a few hours, yes. Just to get the, uh, the pink color. So you make from a black grapes, short contact, right, before the juice is drained off. White zinfandel. Right there. So the grapes, the name of the grapes is white zinfandel. Right so don't get confused, huh? it's a black grapes, but it has the, the word white. Uh, it's a local grapes variety uh, in California. So we will also come across that later. What is there for them? Now, we move on to sweetness now. Uh, there's always a range. Huh? You will always remember. Um, when I say dry, why dry is under sweetness? Why, why? Any idea? In the range of sweetness, Dry is here, Lucius is on the other side. So when I say dry, what does it mean? In the process, it's zero sugar. But some, some, some people may thought that why dry is a sweetness. Dry is not a sweetness. Dry is actually an indication in the range of level of sweetness that is zero sugar. So um, you can come across wine that which is dry. In fact, to be honest, in the markets, 99% of wines are all dry. You only get less than one percent. So majority of wines, all sugar is converted into alcohol and carbon dioxide. So how does how does this happen? All sugar is converted into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Hmm? Fermentation. Fermentation. So you do you stop the yeast? You don't stop. You just let the yeast finish all the way until the end, until all the sugars are consumed whereby the yeast is no longer having any of uh, our energy or food, then they will uh, pass away. So we have um, places like Côte uh, This is a French uh, region, wine region, uh, the southeast of France. Then you have a Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, we will taste the wine later, just to give you a bit of review. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc over here, written here, <coughs> Sauvignon Blanc. This is the name of a grapes. Who is the uh, related family? Just now we came across one of the, the black grapes. Yes, uh, no, no, rosé. Black grapes. White wine. Uh, no, red wine. Cabernet. Cabernet. You know, both of them are using the having the same family. It's like you know your surname, family name. So we know. That's the one, Cabernet Sauvignon. Right. So somehow they are related because they have one of the characteristics, herbaceous. Then we have medium wine. So it's getting slightly more sugars inside the bottle of wine. Right. It can be white, it can be rosé. Can I actually produce a rosé, a pink wine, uh, which is dry? Is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. I can make it dry, rosé. I can make it slightly medium. Medium means got a little bit sugar now. Right? 
I, I can make it really sweet. But if, if someone is going to tell you that the, the wine is sweet, does it really taste sweet? Not, not really. Like why? Because you still have other components like acids, like alcohol. But what you can actually really taste it is after you swallow the wine, you can feel some sugars around your palate. That is what it actually is an indication of sweet. Yes, the luciousness. So, how do you actually produce uh, medium wine? Whenever you come across the word medium, it uh, means that the, the, whether I, I call it medium sweet or I could call it medium dry, both is actually showing the same indications of where there is a slightly more sugar in the bottle than dry wine. So the yeast are removed somewhere in between during the alcoholic fermentation process. Or what I can do is I'll just add a bit more sweet, uh, not a bit more, I mean it's quite a substantial of the sweet grape juice is added. Imagine that the alcoholic fermentation is going on. The yeast is enjoying themselves with all the sugar. You want to stop because you want to retain the sugar. So what I'll do is, based on the second point, the sweet grape juice, I pour it inside the stainless steel tank that when the alcoholic fermentation is going on, the yeast will stop. Reason? Too much of sugar? Too much of sugar? You actually, ah, you drown the, 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 the yeast. They use, they use the word drown uh, to make it slightly more uh, sound better. Then we have a white Zinfandel, Rosé, and also some of the German Riesling. Uh, Riesling is, a, again, I say it's very interesting uh, to call grape variety. It's a white grape variety where it has a floral aroma, blossom, and also floral aroma. That's the only one you will come across. If you also look at the shape of a German wine bottle, slim, thinner, and stretch it up, when you compare to a French bottle, like this is a French wine bottle, then you have this uh, German wine bottle, white wine bottle. Now we have the sweet wine. Right? There's a very high level of sugars, but it balanced by alcohol and also acidity. So it could be some of the white wine can be, you know, sweet wine. Forty wine can also be, to a certain extent. Uh, places like Fontaine's <coughs> in France, some of the German Riesling port can also be uh, sweet and also some sherry. Uh, this bottle, uh, Fontaine, this is where you get the most expensive sweet wine in the world, uh, in France. Okay, the place called Fontaine. Okay, we move on to a little bit more after the colors, uh, after the sweetness. Now let's look at acidity. These are the structures that actually helps to build the wine. So we have acidity. Uh, acids always give us an uh, impression or the, uh, or the feeling of uh, refreshing. And it helps to balance the sweetness okay, in the sweet wine. So then uh, some people will say, why, why not you make a wine that is totally sweet? not sour, no acidity, then they will probably answer you, why not you try orange juice right, instead of wine. Uh, because it's too much of acid, it will taste unpleasant. And if it's too little, you will lose its refreshing characteristic. So that's the importance of acidity. So a balance is important. Right? So examples of those wine that has tends to have high acidity, Whenever you come across a wine bottle, Chablis, the acidity is high. Gante, the acidity is high. Gante is from, any idea? Yes. No. Uh, Spain, Italy. Italy. Okay. So wine from the grapes that you produce, the grapes are Savino Blanc, Riesling, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Pinot Noir. All these grapes variety tends to give you a high acidity level. Okay. Tanning, very important in red wine. Again, it helps to preserve the wine for 50 years to 100 years ahead. Right? It also helps to act as an antiseptic. Okay. And it also gives you another pleasures inside your palate. 
So it actually makes your mouth feel dry. So how, how do you actually know that there is a tanning in the wine? Around your gum, that you can feel the dryness. Right, the sensations of dryness. So how do we actually train ourselves on in terms of tanning? We could actually brew tea, right? Probably a two tea bags inside our teapots. And what we will do is uh, after you brew it for probably about ten minutes, try to have a sip, and that is how you feel like you know it's around your gum. That is how the yeah, tanning feel right now. Uh, tanning from uh, red bottle, uh, Chianti, uh, both are actually red wine. Then those with a very low tanning, Beaujolais, and also some wine from Pinot Noir. So if it's low tanning, what is the impression of the wine that actually gave it to the consumer? It should be a refreshing. Whenever the tanning is low, the red wine usually is a bit more refreshing. If the tanning is high in the wine, what will happen? The impression is very powerful. Very highly concentrated. Okay. That's the tanning. Alcohol is also very important. All right, it's somewhere around 11.5 um, to 14 percent. Generally speaking, most of the wine. Right. Places like this is a, a, a village in France called Chateau de okay. um, What is the price in the markets currently? If you're looking at um, this 2023, right? So it's four years. Um, looking back. 2019, 2018, it should cost about 600 to 700 per bottle in the market, in the benign market. Then you also have another low alcohol white Zentradel. We will taste the white Zentradel later. Sorry, I can't afford Chateau de Pan. <laughs> Let's look at the body. Uh, how do we actually train ourselves in terms of knowing the body, like I mentioned earlier? Uh, you can try the full cream meal, you can try the skin meal. If it's full cream milk, usually it has a very full body. If it's a skim milk, it should be a light body. So how do we train ourselves on the medium body? Oranges. So oranges will be between the full cream milk as well as the skim milk. Examples from the uh, light body wine, uh, you can... Pinot Grigio is very popular. In fact, if you look at uh, most of the, the grocery, uh, the supermarkets nowadays in the market, um, you will tend to come across a lot. My expenses in Gurley Plaza, you walk into the uh, the food sections, you will also come across a lot of Pinot Grigio. Uh, Pinot Grigio is the same grapes as Pinot Gris. Gris, G-R-I-S. But Gris is the word they use in France. Grigio is the word they use in uh, Italian. But are they referring to the same grapes? Yes, it's exactly the same grapes. It's just that they use it in different uh, country or different regions, they name it differently. Then you have Bujole. Uh, Bujole is another interesting uh, wine, um, light body. So these two is, is a, like a daily consumption. So, you know, you work after a, a day, hard day of work, you reach home and thought that Let, let's open a bottle of wine. You should try something like light body. Uh, medium body is where we will start having meal. We pair with food. Medium body, places like Sonset, uh, which is from France. Got to Rome is also from France. Then you have full body wine, like Sultan, as well as California Cabernet Sauvignon. So <coughs> you come across this before, right? But it's still from France. It's actually from California. Let's look at these uh, aroma and flavors. Uh, that helps to contribute towards the styles of wine. We have fruits over here. Um, what we're looking at this is the flavors actually depends on the grapes variety. Right? Uh, just now we have looked into Cabernet Saviano, which is the black grapes. It will give you a very different flavors like black currant, Savino Blanc. Remember that kind of family related to two grapes. Savino Blanc is a white grape variety. But however, it will give you passion fruits. So the fruits depends on the grapes variety as well as also depends on the ripeness. So if you taste a strawberry, a fresh strawberry, 
What is the problem of a strawberry in camera analysis? Any, any idea? Our strawberries from camera analysis is always look wonderful, but after you take the first bite, then you realize, hmm, it's very sour. Then you look at another strawberry, it's probably coming from Japan or South Korea. But you look at exactly the same reason. The weather, yes, the climate play a lot of uh, impact on it. I mean, I think what I um, find out is if you look at the uh, camera handle strawberry, um, the sunlight, right, the temperatures, <coughs> it's like day and night keep working. So it, it actually grows very fast. It grows wonderfully. It means it looks right, but inside is still full of acidity. But if you look at those strawberry coming from uh, South Korea or probably from Japan, because of the climate is different. That climate, what happens is, morning is hot, at night is cold. So when it's cold, what happens to the strawberry? You stop working. When you stop working, you rest, then you will be able to, what is the word? Reduce? You reduce the acid you allow the sugar to take over at night. So that is how the difference between the, the strawberry from Cameron Highlands as well as from the uh, you know, uh, Japan. Now another important uh, what called, uh, components that contribute towards the, uh, the flavor or the aroma of a wine is oak. The oak barrel. Um, four years ago, uh, an oak barrel that come from France uh, it will cost about 16,000 euro, only one. So imagine a winery that tries to invest 100 of them as a huge investment. So whichever the, uh, the wine that has actually gone through the oak treatment, the wine tends to be slightly more expensive due to the high investment. So the oak comes from two countries only. There are only two countries that we will use those oak to actually mature our wine. Uh, one is the French oak, another one is the American oak. Um, both of them tends to give you a very different uh, flavor contributions. The uh, French oak usually will give you vanilla, nuts flavor. The American oak will give you coconut and also smoke. Right? Uh, we believe that the, uh, the Americans, when they actually uh, build the uh, what call the uh, the barrels from the oak wood, uh, they tend to burn it slightly more. So the inner part of the barrels tends to be burned and toasted. That actually eventually contributes towards the the wine. So the oak flavor, uh, fruit is the primary flavor. That's the original, <coughs> right? The secondary is the oak. Okay, and there are also other expressions of uh, what we call. Um, these were called uh, flavors like glassy. Any idea how a glassy aroma or flavor? Genital is just trimming the glasses. You go over there and you start to smell that's a glassy uh, flower, right? flora, and then you've got herbs. It depends on what our herbs. Okay. Uh, vegetables, they call veggie, vegetable, vegetable. How, how different would that be? Uh, a glassy flavor and a vegetable flavor. The the vegetables. It really depends on vegetables, isn't it? Because for glassy, usually it's just green. You go and smell it, it's green. That's it. But for vegetable, it tends to have a bit more uh, flavor. Okay. But not green. That's a slight difference. Glassy, it gives you impression of green. Uh, vegetal does not actually give you the impression of green. Then you go earth. Earth is where um, you go into the forest. It has not been rained for the last two weeks. Right? You pick up the, the dirt. That, that is the earthy smell. Then you got mushroom and then you got lettuce. So those are the what called the flavors that you may come across uh, from the wine. Um, let's take a break. Okay. Let's take a. 10 minute break, let's come back at 3.30.
so it's more than an hour so I decided to stop the recording So, what you're going to do is look at the list over here and fill in the blank, which match the descriptions on the right. While you are doing that, I am going to get our wine from the chiller. Just give me a second.
टू वर्ड वाइट शब्द है
Richard, you want to try the second one? Uh, Chambres, huh? Uh, Pinot Noir. The Pinot Noir cannot be Chambres anymore. Uh, Champagne? Yep. Champagne. Yeah. You know what actually is big uh, about Champagne? There are two. One is a sparkling wine, and another one is a break note. Champagne, only Champagne got this break note or sparkling wine. <coughs> uh, break notes is because, uh, to be more precise, uh, we would call it brioche. We would call it brioche. Or we call it biscuits uh, notes. Why? Because of the dead ease um, in making sparkling wine. When we make sparkling wine, we don't take out the dead ease. We allow the dead ease to gather during the maturation. So the maturation, maturation starts from nine months, minimum nine months up to 36 months. So it depends on the producer. So producer want to make it really high class, good quality, they will mature for 36 months. Then if they think they quickly they want to put push to the market and then try to make the, the, the bar, you know, make a return, then they will do nine months. But then the quality will be lower. So generally speaking, uh, a very good quality champagne will usually two years. Uh, two years of maturation. Or, in other words, we call it the least aging. We call it the least aging. That's the maturation. Right? Le least means that the death is least to the martina. So you don't take it out, you just still put it in together with the sparkling wine. So you mature it for uh, 24 months, lease aging. The longer the lease aging, uh, it will be perceived as better quality in the sparkling wine. Uh, one thing, you want to try the third one? Uh, the red yeah, most often red, high acidity, high tanning, dry, medium to full, black currant, green bell peppers, and oak. Green, what do you think? Considered something else? Red, very powerful, full body, black currants. The only place that produces red? Bodo. 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 
has come back to you, Dinesh. What do you think? Uh, light body next one me. is uh, light body followed by Ikki is Prosecco. Yes, excellent. It's Prosecco. Uh, is the substitutions of uh, <coughs> this one called champagne. If I cannot afford champagne, I may consider kava. If I cannot afford kava, then I go to prosecco. So it's like the level will go down. So in other words, prosecco's the quality tends to be lower than kava. Kava's quality lower than champagne. So Richard, let's try the dry sparkling wine from Spain. Kava, yes, excellent. One thing, what do you think? Dry, light body, French white. I'm open. Chablis, yes. Made from Chardonnay, Chablis. Hmm? And go back to you, Dinesh. Burgundy. Burgundy, yes. So Burgundy got two Pinot Noir and also Chardonnay. Let's look at the answer. There's the answer. Uh, the first one is the white grape there. Champagne, <coughs> Bordeaux. Prosecco, Cava, Chablis, and Burgundy. Alright, let's talk a little bit about uh, how we can systematically taste the wine. Um, the reason of tasting the wine is to judge, right, um, to know whether the quality is there, whether the wine has a balance, whether the wine is actually your preference, your like and dislike, so therefore, we taste. So they don't even use the word drink. Eh? So what does it mean? It means you don't swallow it, right? You only taste it. But it's up to you, right? I have a cup available for you to spit. That should be enough. Don't worry, you won't fill up the, the whole cup. Hopefully, about half of them. So when we taste the wine, uh, we look at those three things. The look, the smell, the taste, the appearance, right? Is where to judge the quality of the or the color. So by looking at the color, you can tell whether it's red, whether it's white, <coughs> whether it's pink. So there's appearance. So we look at the nose because we want to smell. In fact, um, to know exactly what is the, or what are the aroma, uh, we base on the uh, what we call the nose. Um, if you drink, you won't be able to tell. But if you put it inside your mouth and gargle, then the aroma will go up from your, this what we call the, uh, the back of your, no, the back, the top of your nose, the, 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 your, what call the, what is that? Ah, this, this, this place, uh, your, uh, uh, um, carroty, carroty, the jaw, so you go up to the nose, right? Then the palate is the taste. So the smell and also the taste should be the same, right? You can't be, hey, one aroma, then when it comes to palettes, it's totally different. Can we find uh, red fruits flavor in Cabernet Sauvignon? Yes or no? Yes. Cannot. You will totally cannot, you definitely won't find. Is that possible to find tanning in white wine? No. Again, that's not. So we know those things will not happen when we taste the wine, so it will be cut out. So we will be using this, uh, what we call our format, right, um, to actually taste our wine later. We will look at appearance, basically just the color, right? Then I will show you another one, to look at the intensity of the color, how deep is the color, uh, which is not here. Then we can look into the nose, the aroma characteristics, so can we actually tell all those wines, <coughs> except one bottle, which is slightly more than 100. The rest are under 100 ringgit. So you can imagine the aroma, the flavor is going to be very subtle, right? It's not going to be very powerful. Um, since it's because it's uh, less than 100 ringgit, uh, so forget about Oak. Uh, I don't think any one of them for Oak. Uh, huh? And it won't be Oak. Then we will look into the parrot palettes, we will look into the level of uh, sweetness, whether dry, medium, or luscious. Then we look into the acidity, low, medium, high, tanning, low, medium, high, alcohol, low, medium, high, body, light, medium, and full. And then we try to reaffirm right, the flavor with our aroma. 
Okay, shall we? Let's start off with the pink one, the rosé. So I will take glass number four. Hey, no, glass number one. So digital. We should not try this first. We should start off with white. Let's start off with white. <coughs> Then we, after the white, uh, then we come back to the rosé. So if it's too cold, then we will not be able to taste. If it's too warm, then you will lose all the flavor. So in this case, I think it should be okay. Lah. Just like, still a bit cold. Do I expect a full glass, huh? Yes. <laughs> if, if you want, you can have it later. No one's a great effort of the My friend really drinks this water. We need a 200 pour shower water or make sure. And it's from smell. Johnny Walker, of course, I think it's kind of Okay, try the second one. You don't like two or something. Ready, set, ready, set. Huh? Stay, ready, set. How you know the name? So, I guess, smell ready, man. Cure your flu ready. Don't drink wine, become crazy again. Must be one. Correct. Correct. Yeah, you can smell, you can. <laughs> you can smell, you can see, you can breathe. Okay, let's try the uh, first glass. So, when we taste, we look at it. First, the appearance. You can have a, a, a piece of paper in front of you. You can have a piece of paper, you turn to the back. What you can do is, of course, we know that this is going to be, uh, you know, white lah, huh? yellow is a yellow beach, if it's a bit greenish. When you look down, Spotify, when you look down, you can see the edge of the wine is almost transparent, yeah. very watery. So what does it mean? Do I call it? Yeah? it, it mm, not really. It means that this is very young wine. It should be consumed at young. And if you judge in terms of quality, it's going to be very low quality. Right? And intensity wise, I would say this is low intensity. The color is very low intensity. It's like almost very watery at the side. So if you look at those wines that is very uh, obvious, all the way to the edge, then those are high intensity. Okay? But then, yeah. oh, sorry. But in the pub, I usually very dark on it. You can't do it. They won't tell you. They won't let you know. That's why we have to test. We learn to approach them. So you may want to write down uh, somewhere on a piece of paper. Don't forget, remember you have created your, your wine earlier. Later, we are trying to match whether the wine that we have created does it sound like any one of them? So the first one appearance, the first wine you can put down wine number one. So then it should be a uh, white wine. There's the color. White wine. The aroma, we can start smelling it. You stir it a while just to help to release the aroma. Pick up anything from that? It's a fruity smell, yes. Kind of refreshing. This one is the 
Pero buen cuento, es una visión de Soxo, no es el mismo de Maybe a bit. Lemon, definitely there. Lemon is obvious. Pisha. Apple. Oh, green apple. No, no red apple. There won't be a red apple. The green apple, the, the, the lemons, the green apple is obvious. Some people may, 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 may have pear. Some. So it really challenged your memory, you know, how much you can actually remember about flavor. It's called a flavor memory. So how much you can actually remember. But it's easier to remember what is actually written down. But it's not easy to remember what we have actually experienced through our palate and nose. Shall we? Let's taste it. <coughs> now, what do you think of acidity? Quite high. Quite high. Mm. If you open the mouth, your saliva quickly come up. Mm. Right? So, dry? Sweetness? Dry? Do you taste any sweetness there? No sweetness, so it's dry. So, acidity, I would say high. There is no tanning. Because it's a white wine, it should not have tanning. High. So how do you know high? The it's saliva. The I usually will put my head down, quickly open my mouth. Sometimes I miss, <laughs> my saliva will drop. But that is one way to, to test it. But if you, it's the most effective way, let's put it this way. The reason why is because the moment you, I spit it out, I didn't swallow. So I open my mouth. If the saliva will come down very slow, it's medium. If I don't feel saliva coming out, Maybe it's at the back, then it's a low. Okay, that's how you judge. Well, we don't judge the alcohol, <coughs> but what do you think of the alcohol? 14. Not 13. Mm. Close? Well, I'm not on. It's 13.5. <laughs> it's 13.5. So what do you think? It's Where does it come from? It's 13.5 is quite high. <coughs> So what do you think? Where, where does this uh, no, come from? Usually it's zero. The Australian one is less than 10. I don't know. I think it's the other way around. Yeah. Mm. This is Australian one. Australian one. It's an Australian yeah. Chardonnay. So your alcohol level is high, 13.5. New place, is that it? Victoria. It's high or tiny place? 13.5. Mm. It's quite high. For a white wine, 13.5 is considered high. Usually they stay at 12. 12 is sufficient. So you're looking at the uh, the European white wine for Chardonnay, it was somewhere 12, 12.5. So when you taste, it tastes more elegant, more balanced. So why alcohol is high? We will consider the acid is also quite high, isn't it? So there is a process called acidification. Acidification means you add acid. So then you make it more refreshing. Because you know, in these places, they, they grow it too hot, alcohol sugar is too much. So if, since alcohol is too much, huh, what happens is, if you don't, you're not able to maintain the acidity, so what they will do during the wine making process, they acidify, they add acid. So you end up, eh? surprisingly, there's a bit contradict. Alcohol is high. Right? Uh -huh. Acidity is also high. That is uh, what we call the treatment they make or the choice of wine making process that they have decided to put in place. I don't think there's any hope inside uh, because it's very refreshing. So that will be our first one Chardonnay or Australian. Oh, I love to have it. This is my first time I tasted it. 
It's a new one, quite new in the market. Very clear, no? Yeah. But if it's a little bit of AZ, do you think that does it means the quality is affected? Assuming that it's still consumable, but when you look at it, it's a bit hazy inside. Would you would you buy or you would prefer something which is really clear? I have never bought white wine and sheltered one of these. So what do you think? If you have two bottles in front of you, one is absolutely clear, transparent, clean, another one you might find a little bit hazy inside. It okay. comes from the same same producer. Maybe the hazy one, right? You will buy the hazy one. <laughs> very weird, huh? Unless the clear one seems like very synthetic, the hazy one. Is <laughs> yes, so that's what <laughs> that's what most of the uh, wine lover used to say, right? Because the taste is basically the same. It's just that here they go through filtration, this one they don't go through filtration. But doesn't mean that this is bad. You know, it, it's just that they don't go through filtration. When you filter, you lost some of the flavor inside. But of course, this is less than 100 ringgit, then we don't complain. Uh. If you're talking about those with well, 300, uh, 275 and above 400 ringgit of white wine, um, you know, if you filter it, you will lose some of the aroma. But then, generally speaking, the market still prefer yeah, clear. So then they feel that, oh, it's safe to drink. Hazy, they may perceive it as spoiled. Uh, or, mm, or yeast is, uh, you know, you didn't filter the yeast, uh, I don't like the yeast. Let, let's try the second wine. So it is, uh, it's again, it's a wine. Very similar, all right? So the, you look at the edges of the, the wine. Yeah. In fact, this is much clearer, more watery around the edge. Right? The intensity is even much lower compared to the first one. The first one tends to be more green, uh, what call <coughs> lemon, isn't it? The color is more, more lemon. Very refreshing. Compared to the first one, what do you think? What can you recall with the first one? Two, three, three levels. I mean, the, the first impression is. Oh, this is more. Strong, oh. more powerful, more refreshing. Yeah. You can drink this after the room. So what do you think? In terms of acidity, do you think that the second one will be higher than the first one? Higher. Because it's so I refreshing. I feel, feel the thing in my nose. Mm. The acidity. The feel. Acidity is high. Let's try it. Very easy. So, would you change your mind? But this the is first wine, right? <coughs> That's two thousand. The vintage is two thousand eighteen. It's slightly older, but there's nothing to do with the the, the age. So the vintage for this wine is two thousand eighteen. So two thousand eighteen today is twenty twenty three. <coughs> so you're looking about six years. Perfect time to drink. Five years. Vintage is too much. It's very acidic. So are you going to change your answer? So the first one, in fact, is not a high acidity. First one is actually a medium acidity. So only the second one, the acidity level is high. This is called high. That is called medium. So you just need to remember this today, this moment. When you drink a wine that tastes like the second one, that is called high acidity. If you recall the first wine that you drunk, that is called medium acidity. If totally nothing coming out, 
there to know that the but that is impossible like right? very unlikely <coughs> so any somehow be able to recognize what kind of fruits coming from the second one? Then you start with green apples. Still green apples, still the pear, lemons. The body is like exactly like the first one. Right. So what do you think of the body? Like the first one? Very light. Very light, huh? The first, the second, very close. What do you think of alcohol level? The second glass? I think the alcohol might not be very high. Because of the high acidity. <coughs> the difference is 0.5%. This is 13, this is 13.5. That's much different than that. And remember, Sabino Blanc from Marlboro. So you want to release something which is refreshing, you try this. When you're having char siu, you take this. When you have char siu, siu ba, you know, rose pork, char siu, this will be the one. Anything which is oily, uh, you take this one. <coughs> it helps to clean your palate immediately. If you have something which is like sweet and sour, you know, the sauce are sweet and sour, then you should try something more like uh, what about the Bujolet? It's not we have one, right? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is the other exercise we have done. No, the, the wine is, yeah, the wine. The second <coughs> one, the wine is under red wine. The domain, copet, oh. usually France. That is something where you, you because you can't use white, uh, because it's sweet and sour, chicken, sweet and sour pork, sweet and sour fish, because of the, the sauce. So if you're using white, you don't feel anything. You only feel like you're drinking alcohol. So you would rather try something like this, uh, you no, know, usually that would be good for sweet and sour, but this sweet and sour that you order cannot be too heavy the sauce. Just like normal, the normal sweet and sour where you go to the Tai Tai Tong, Tu Cha, that sort of places. Nah. So if you go to those really Cantonese restaurants, <coughs> like Air Con Cantonese restaurant, the flavor of sweet and sour might be a bit too strong. So it might not be suitable. Okay. Do you remember the, the flavor of a Sabino Blanc? You should have a bit of a delicious green bell pepper. What else? If it's from Australia, I know Australia, uh, a bit of passion fruit on the upper taste. I think that's quite obvious on that. The rest of them. That's all. Anyone can feel asparagus? Do you think you can feel asparagus from the second one? No, it's not the story that's not. That's the challenge when we drinking wine. So when we learn from the theory, saying that you know, there'll be no blocks for asparagus. And those students, wine students, they have to go and taste asparagus. Uh, they have to taste the one that they steam. They cannot cook with oil, so they just steam it, and they take a bite. And you try to remember the, the aroma or the flavor. <coughs> okay. <coughs> uh, let's do the, the big one. You want to clear away one of your, you know, I later you will take the red wine, cover the white Okay, okay. Take the red, cover the white. You want to try this before? Mm -hmm. like it. And it's not expensive, this bottle. 
This one you can only get it from uh, Sunshine. Sunshine. Yes. Elsewhere, very difficult. Sunshine is the one that import a lot of pink wine. This brand of Perigo, white is in Panjang. Okay, using white is in Panjang. Uh, I, I bought this bottle like 50 something, 60? Around that? Yeah. They are selling it. This price is because <coughs> they know someone else is not selling it. It's not easy to get this pink bottle from Jaya. Jaya definitely tak ada. Yeah. Mercato pun tak ada. So I can only get it from Sunshine. So I think they know the market, so they push up a little bit the price, maybe. They, they have Barriga brand, white and red, but no pink, surprisingly. Shall we? So it's a pink wine. Also very low intensity, you can see the watery around the edge. You can smell it. Flora smell. Note is there. If you put inside your mouth immediately, you can say that this is not dry. <coughs> and you, you know that it's not dry, it's medium. It's medium. Or you can call it medium sweet, or you can call it medium dry. But definitely not sweet, like, huh? not sweet yet. Hot and sweet, is it? Hot. Definitely it's much sweeter than this. But because of the alcohol level, it actually balances up. So you may not be able to feel it immediately. It's only 10%. <coughs> Here it says it's a semi-dry or demi-set, means medium. It's at the back. Written down at the back. This is 2019 vintage. But it's still perfect. It's not in 2019. <laughs> this is just nice, you know. You know, like, you work, you go home. You feel like having a glass of uh, drink. Malaysians has the uh, sweet tooth. Yeah. Uh, this is also another good choice. These are less popular among Malaysians because it's very refreshing. Oh, you can find it more refreshing because the acidity level. So when the acid is higher. The word refreshing will come. Because it's expired then. Uh. There's no expiry. Oh, there's no expiry. Mm, there's no expiry. So usually we will months. just treat it as five to six years. Uh. Okay, okay. You know, if, if uh, <coughs> this is so one night, right? So five to six years. Mm. Around that. Uh. Now you should be drinking it. Uh. You should finish it out. Uh, usually we advise uh, consumer to drink within five years. So anything more than five years, you may want to stop buying it. Because you may actually some of the flavor, uh, because it, it is it go through the wine making process. So it is a it's a it's a product that has been somehow you know manufactured. So <coughs> the, the the chemical component inside the bottles may just change. You lost your flavor. And become more bitter also. I would say low tanning. You don't feel anything at all. If you don't feel anything at all, it's still considered low tanning. So if Malaysia, Malaysia is like summer 365 days, uh, except the rainy days, so it's just perfect for the whole year. So if you look at in Europe, um, people will drink pink wine mostly in summer, you know, outside on the field. 
But my my advice is like uh, my suggestion is uh, if you ever try char siu or roasted pork, try this. It can be any brand, your choice. It could be any brand, your choice. Like provided it comes from Marlboro, uh, New Zealand. <coughs> and this is a bit more medium because it's Chardonnay. More kind of a restraint, a little bit. It's more restrained. On to red wine. Still very cold. This one, uh, I think, very strong. Yeah. Mm. Very expensive. Three weeks ago, I was doing it. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> it's been 150. I guess so. What do you have to Just a bit of me. I don't want that. Okay. You cannot put it too strong. This is not bad, no? The color white one. The intensity is more like medium. So how do we judge uh, in terms of intensity? Uh, we look at this. We put our finger at the bottom of our the wine glass. Can you see your finger? Hardly, right? Yeah. Mm. So the intensity is medium. Hardly. <laughs> you can still see your finger moving. La, uh, but then, hardly not very clear, la. so that's medium intensity. If you totally cannot see your fingers, la, that is uh, what we call high intensity in terms of uh, color. So we can judge based on by looking at can I, can you see it? Look, it, look, that's why your, your finger has to move, and then only can see it. And this, this is not a very uh, good this is not a very good one. A glass, whether it's good or not, uh, you can judge uh, by look at this. You see the bottom? Yeah. This is thick. Yeah, this is thick. You can see that there is a layer before the stem. A good wine glass do not have that layer. It will go all the way to the stem. So this is Obviously, what happens is when they make this wine glass, two parts. Two parts. So, if a wine glass which is good, the whole thing is one. It's all come from a glass, a glass, not joined together. And this one is joined. You can even feel at the bottom it's joined. They didn't pull it one stretch. They join it so it's faster. Manufacturing one. They just need to mold the, the bottom stem. They will just join the two of them together. It's faster. Because pool, you need labor, you need specialists to really pull it. It's going to be very expensive. So that's why uh, you have difficulty in seeing your fingers. That's also one of the reasons. But if you are using what they call the ISO uh, tasting lab, you, you will not be joined, you will be like one whole stretch. So you can see the, your fingers moving. This one can be a bit challenging, but can still see the finger moving a bit in terms of the shadow. Not very clear. But I would say it is medium. If you can still recall during the, uh, the, the TTT training, um, remember the, the wine or red wine? Usually we have a much bigger bowl, 
So then you can absorb the, the oxygen to, to release the flavor. I think can release. It's warm enough. If it's too cold, <coughs> if it's a red wine, it's too cold. You, you see people drinking red wine at the open air, like uh, food court, by uh, open air restaurants. You cannot, cannot really, you don't really be able to enjoy it. Unless you just want to drink. Uh, you will not be able to feel the, the aroma. One thing is because the surrounding <laughs> environment uh, is too hot. The environment is too hot. So you, know, you need to actually drink red wine inside an aircon room. So, because to, to serve a red wine, it is something around 16 degrees Celsius. The environment must be 16 to 17 degrees Celsius. But that's very unlikely uh, in Malaysia. Yeah. Unless you switch on the aircon really cold. Then you also need to look into the, the temperatures of red wine. When you will serve somewhere around 15 to 16. So there's a lot of things you need to take into consideration. If you are doing a, a wine tasting with a, a really a group of people, like 100 people or 50 people in front of you, and you're on the stage tasting the wine, you will not be able to taste the wine properly because the whole environment temperature will just go up. So it's not easy. So there is a difference between drinking and tasting that that's why they are trying to argue. is there. You can feel the herbaceous is there. So the third glass is a um, no, except the rosé lah. After the rosé, so it's a red. Um, it's a dry. What do you think of acidity? Quite high. High. But not as high as compared to the second one lah. Hmm. A bit comparable to the first one. So, what do you think? Is it medium or medium, medium. low? Can say medium minus. Medium minus. Mm. We can say medium minus. What is the same thing? Say something like the the lagging. The, the lagging. L U G. The lagging. Leg. So the lagging. So like you know the lagging part is lagging. The lagging. So if you are, uh, if there tends to be a lot around and very slow, it indicates the quality of the wine. That's right. Mm. But if not much, but then it flow very fast. Then it shows the intensity because the intensity is very low. Uh, the intensity is low, therefore you don't really you can see that it can be down very fast. You don't see much of the lagging means it has to slowly. You can see that it's slowly coming down. When you look at this, they already came down all the way. Boom, boom, boom. It has salvation. Right? It has Tanning, what do you think of the tanning? It's dry, confirm. What do you think of the tanning? Tanning. Not very high, uh, I think. Not very high. Uh. Okay, we're not sure whether the tanning is low or high, right? No worry, because there's one more bar. We can compare. Acidity. Medium. 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 Very similar to this. Or oh, it's lower. Lower. Lower than this. So it's going to be medium minus. 
But in this case, if we don't have medium minus, then it will be low. Alcohol, what do you think? A red wine. You think alcohol is higher than this? Too? I think alcohol is about 13. 15, 20, 15, 15. It's a vintage 2020. 14. 14. I'm expert in alcohol. My mom always likes buying green wine cheap. Hmm? From last time, it's 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 my, uh, my friend came back from Melbourne, uh, Chinese New Year. So I went to his house, and then the brother actually took out almost like 20 bottles. All 20 bottles, child. You open up all vinegar smell. Yeah. Mm. Because they kept it for too long, and most of the wine they are made to be consumed within the next five years. So if, you, if you keep it for too long, then, you know, because there's a chemical reaction inside. Let's find the, the next one. So I need you to clear your uh this one called the uh rose wine. Kill up wine the rose. Third class in the movie is the second class. Tomorrow, so you don't have to pay the wine when I'm fed and of nigger. By the time tomorrow is nigger. <coughs> this reminds me of Ribena. Isn't it this one look more like a Ribena? This first one, yeah. This one, like, this one is more concentrated Ribena. Black Ribena. What color is that? Look at this. If you look at it, the color is slightly different from the yeah. previous one. This is later, right? <coughs> is it later? So ruby, right? Hmm? So ruby. Ruby, yeah. Mm. Ruby. This one is lesser. No, this is really deeper, deep. right? Like, this is yeah. deeper, huh? more powerful. Acid level definitely higher than the previous one. It's kind of so you can see that. Maybe. But then the acid is not high. This acid is not high. <coughs> Medium. I think it's not high, it's medium. How does it stay in the trough for quite some time? I think it tends to be slightly... Um, no, no, I don't say this is a full body. It's less than 108. It cannot be full body. And it doesn't feel like full body. If you feel it's a full body, you put pressure on your tongue. You want to know how much is the alcohol, It's not that burning, you say. It's not that burning, you say. But still, it's 14%. This is a Shiraz. Spiciness. Does it remind you of a bit of spiciness inside? Compared to the, the first one, right? So the first rate is <coughs> Sabiano. So it's more like a black carrot pack. So it doesn't really spicy at all. But it does give you the kind of uh, Herbaceous. Then this is uh, Shiraz. Remember, Shiraz got black pepper. So the spiciness. Once you detect the spiciness, that is the black pepper. We can't tell exactly. But this one is very delicious. Because the tanning is higher than the first one. This one, the tanning is higher. Why? Because I think Shiraz, this is from Australia. 
So what happened is in Shiraz, Australia, they try to grow the grape under the hot sun. Under the hot sun. So you reach the full redness on the skins everywhere. However, for Cabernet Sauvignon, not Cabernet Sauvignon, they don't want to make it too powerful. <coughs> they want to make it <coughs> like the European, the French. So they want to actually make it a bit more restrained and subtle. If you make it too powerful, it's very difficult for you to pair the wine up. Pair the food. The wine will also mm. So you, your wine will be overpower the food. You do not want that. So the, the so-called quality wine, that according to the uh, what call the experts, is don't make it too powerful, don't make it too light. In between. So what makes a French wine so popular, so expensive, is they are able to make it in between. So then what happens is the word they use is elegant. Too powerful is not elegant. Too light is not elegant. So elegant means balance. So Shiraz has always been more powerful in Australia than uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon that they produce. For those wine that is under 100 again. So the second one, Shiraz, is red, <coughs> has spiciness, uh, dry, acid level, medium, maybe, tanning, medium, alcohol, high, body, light, light body, can be a medium body. Questions about why outside, not necessary today's lesson. <coughs> it could be any questions. Uh, how on. do we know that this, uh, that wine is uh, authentic or not authentic? Is there a way to see? Um, very difficult. It's very difficult. No. Um, we have in the history of uh, fake wine in US, they have this um, Indonesian guy, very young Indonesian guy. He managed to blend the wine and actually taste like those uh, high end from Bordeaux. So when you actually open and people drink it, those experts feel that hey, this is exactly how it tastes like. But he did it at his kitchen, in, in the house. He, what he did is, he just get the bottle, right? And then, of course, it's an empty bottle. I don't know how he get it from. He probably get it from other restaurants. He take the bottle, home, then he buy those wine, he blend, and then he fill up the bottle. And then he recall everything, he put back into the market. He brought those wine and go and sell it. Not sell, go and uh, treat his friends party, then he bring his wine, you know, then they <coughs> thought that he is an expert. So a lot of people actually buy wine from him. And he did all his wine inside the kitchen. And uh, how he got busted is because um, there was this, uh, the owner of a estate came to US and found out that I never saw this bottle in US. That's how he would be faster. Your tap water of wine are not selling in the US. He never allowed that his wine to sell in the US. It was all the wine in Europe. So he found that why there's such a wine, my wine bottle, my wine selling in the US. So he, he found a report police and finally they caught the guy. And then there was this documentary and also books actually came out. So you can, you can actually get it from online. I think the books is also free nowadays because there's no value in fact. Just another story. Mm. So it's very difficult. Uh. It's very difficult to 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 know whether it's authentic or not authentic. Of course, the first thing we look at the 
the bottle. Uh, we look at the bottle. And we need to know the vintage. The vintage means what? Vintage means the year. Okay. Starting from, remember we were trying earlier, uh, your, this exercise, the vintage. So the vintage starts from this moment. The bus bus. That's where the vintage. Because the bus bus is much. The uh, winter dormancy doesn't count. It, it started from last year, so we don't count. So we count from now. So it, it burst, then the flowering, our uh, flowering, the shoot, the flowering, the grape, it all happens in the same year. And then harvest in September. So it probably takes about nine months to wait. Right. So when I say 2021, it all happens in 2021. But the bottling happens in 2022. It doesn't matter because this is more important. This is the original of the product. That means the raw material. I may be uh, taking probably what two years to mature my wine, but that is already crossed to the, the following year. It doesn't matter. So when we say the vintage 2021 means it starts from harvest all the way until the harvest into the winery. So that's 2021. So if I look at eh, 2021, it wasn't that a good year because it's too hot. So when I drink the wine. It's, it's not too much of alcohol. Right. You know, there's a lot of high acidity. Then I suspect this could be the, the big one. So um, the the wine experts <coughs> need to know all the region, <coughs> the climate, the weather for <coughs> every year. So they have to tell our bottle this year rain too much. So then don't expect. And then California this year that was fire. So you will expect smoke inside the wine because the grape will absorb the smoke. So when we drink. You will expect more. So all these judges or possibly the experts, they have to know the vintage, what is happening in that year. So then they can uh, they can tell whether the wine is uh, genuine or it's actually a fake wine. So there's a lot to take in. So um, usually um, a commoner will not be able to tell whether it's... What you can tell, in fact, what we are trying to train the people is to Train them to be able to recognize the grape the wrong. That's good enough. Questions? Anything? No? Richard? No? Okay. <coughs> in that case, uh, we move on. Um, so, that's almost the end of today's sessions. Uh, let's try to recap on our learning outcome. Um, our first learning outcome is to identify the key stages in grape growing and also in wine making. I think we have done the exercise on the uh, individual exercise on the grape growing. That is the one. We have done it. And then we have also done the uh, key stages in wine making. That is the one over here. So perfect excellence. In our learning outcome two, uh, we look at three things. We identify the types of wine, right? The characteristic of the wine and sort of styles of wine. So the type of wine is the uh, uh, what about the steel wine, the sparkling, the fortifying, and then the characteristics is like the structural. We took about the uh, what about uh, the body, the tanning, the acids, right, the color, okay, and then the style of wine. It's actually a combination of all of them. So before we actually go, let's look at the the wine that you have created. Look at the <laughs> wine that you have created. <laughs> one thing. One thing is looking at a steel wine, red, or pink, as a light, cannot be light sweetness, uh, either dry or high, medium, high or high sweetness. Yeah. High sweetness means luscious. Or <laughs> <laughs> then uh, low acidity, then low tanning, uh, low medium body. Medium body. Oh, either medium minus or low body or medium body cannot be low medium body. Medium body. Medium body. Medium body. So what do you think? <laughs> That is the one. Okay. So medium sweetness. Alright. 
acidity wise is medium effect. This is medium acidity, right? And then low tannin, correct? And then uh, what do you think of the body? Medium, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. How about you, Dinesh? Mine is still wine. Like you said, red. Medium dry, medium acidity. It cannot be medium dry. Oh, medium dry. All right, understood. Medium dry. Medium uh, acidity. Yeah. Uh, tannin as a medium, alcohol high. So what do you think? Any of the wine that we tasted today? Uh, red wine mix would be the second one we bought. The Shiraz. So if you like Shiraz, then uh, body is medium. Mm -hmm. But the Shiraz body is very light. Very light. Yes. Then uh, like fruity and floral, a bit woody aroma. Okay, that's good. That means that it has to be uh, <coughs> pork. No, you don't know. Cedar, is it? Cedar, yes. That means it has to be oak. Huh? It has to be oak. Right. So, do you think that there's this surprise that you know the alcohol is 14, the body tends to be very light? Yeah. Any particular reasons? Yes, acidification. They actually bring down the body. Richard, and one your side. Is he one red color, high acidity, high tanning, high alcohol? That's all. Richard is looking at very expensive wine. <laughs> A wine that can last <coughs> 50 years or 100 years. So those are the <laughs> those are the structures of the wine. That actually <coughs> form the style. So you have your style of wine that you are looking at. So that's a style of wine. A combination of the some of the characteristics that we learned over here. I don't know. They want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. All right. Um, but again, your feedback. <coughs> <coughs> Good luck clearing everything, very soon. Yeah, I mean. Socialize, you know, when you're going to meet your your this, uh, potential partner. <laughs> Lunch meeting. Buy one, it doesn't feel right. So at least you need to buy yeah, three. The white wine, the different mm. levels, the spicy cheese, and yeah. so it's like, <laughs> So maybe next round, uh, I can work with Jeff to do a pairing. Then we can do some cooking in the kitchen. Okay. Then <coughs> we can try out. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your time. So how are you going to clean up? Huh? I will do it. Sure. No problem. Still okay. You need help? Tell no, no, it's okay. I just need to put all inside the, the tray. Come, then they put it in the drink. Come. Now I'll just put it in the drink. Thank you very much. Throw it? No, 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 you're fine. I'll just walk another one now or two. Come on, I'll just take it. One thing, one thing. Come on, one thing. What you need to do is, you're going to finish it by tonight. Can, can.
Yeah. What you can do now is you can I can just get a wrapper or something to cover up. Too bad, I cannot. I see aluminum foil. Like that. Aluminum foil, but I don't have it here. You sure? Unless you don't find it. Very cocky. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think. 